The culmination of the 2011 season, the Fiesta Bowl against Stanford, which could have been the national championship game easily. I mean, taking nothing away from Alabama or LSU, but it could have been Stanford and Oklahoma State, and no one would have said those two teams aren't good enough. They would never have said that. Yeah, it was. I mean, I said, I think publicly, I said, I mean, this is going to be the best bowl game that year. I mean, two really good teams, two completely different teams, um, you know, and I was maybe a little biased, but I, and it turned out to be, in my opinion, the best game that year. It was a, uh, it was a special one. I mean, it's the last one, obviously, so it's always special, but uh, it dang sure didn't start the way I wanted it to. Two big-time quarterbacks, you and Andrew Luck. Yeah, and I knew, you know, going against a guy like Luck, I mean, you know, even though we didn't watch a ton of their games since he's on the West Coast, I mean, I knew what kind of player he was, you know, so I, and I knew he wasn't going to screw it up, and I knew they were going to control the clock, and they're going to try to keep us off the field and the whole deal. Um, so I just knew that I couldn't hurt us. You know, I, I couldn't hand them a game by making a bunch of mistakes. And, uh, of course, what do I do the first play? Make a boneheaded mistake here. But, you know, well-designed play. You know, corner kind of falls off. You know, I'm greedy. I try to get to Blackman versus just throwing underneath to Kai Staley. Trying to make a big play. And this is my fault. I mean, I, you know, I was, I was at fault for this numerous times in my career. Uh, I'm just trying to make a play that sometimes isn't there. But, oh, well. We got, we got a lot of plays left, so move on, move on to the next one. So, again, I mean, you know, they're out to a 7 nothing lead, and, you know, defense had held up pretty good for the, throughout the first quarter. But um, they'd run one here to make a, you know, 14 nothing game, and, and there was no panic. I mean, we knew what we could do offensively. We just had to, you know, limit it to mistakes, and, uh, you know, we were able to, to kind of march back. But this was, uh, this was a good defense. You know, I would say – I would say – of all the teams we've played this year, this is probably the most physical defense of unit we've played all year. These guys up front, there's a couple of guys that went on to play in the NFL. They had a couple of guys in the secondary that played in the NFL. They had some good players. They were, they were a hitch in the mouth, physical, aggressive style of defense. And we knew that coming in. We just had to, we just had to be patient. We knew it was gonna be a long game. And, and uh, it's a big night for that guy, Colton Shelf. He had a huge game, you know, a huge game. He, you know, we ran this play a couple of times, um, but this was this was a big one. This one kind of set us up going forward, and and uh, you know, momentum. All, this offense is is about momentum. I mean, you want you know you want positive plays, you want chunk plays because it allows you to play fast and you dictate the tempo and you kind of do those things. And you know, plays like that, you know, set you up for the next play and they kind of allow you to you know get forward and springboard you toward bigger plays. Yeah, nice little sweep. This is just a little eye violation for the linebackers. You see Josh coming in front. You know, we still do this. A lot of teams do this across the country, but you know, you got one guy going this way, one guy going this way. It kind of freezes those guys just enough where you're able to throw the ball over the top of their heads. And versus that split safety coverage, there's nobody in the middle of the field. So that's just a well-designed play by Coach Munkin, the staff, and and uh, Colton executed it as good as we could. Another good play, another eye violation play. This is a this is a good play for us. You know, we didn't run it a ton. This was a install late in the year, but you know when you watch, everybody sees Joe running out here. So we're thinking this is a screen out to the back. With these guys, you can't really see it on tape, but they flat foot and leave the best receiver in the country running up the seam, and that's just that's just stealing. So read that outside in. You know, I'm reading the outside guy first. Whiteman's number two in the slot. I'm reading him second. So that was just a, an easy pitch and catch for us. Now now you're talking. Now we got a, a seven nothing game. And we feel like we're right back in it. Now we got a little bit of momentum. And, and I mean, I don't know about me, but if I'm playing defense, I wouldn't give the best receiver in the country that much space. I don't care who's playing quarterback or who's anywhere. That's going to be tough to, tough to stop. Do I remember it right? I don't think Justin had a catch in the first quarter, if I remember right. And the legend is he was stalking around the sideline. He was not happy, which – now, help me out on this. I always had the impression – that when he was a little bit mad, he was at his best. And I fact, I think I remember Robert Allen on the radio saying, he is not happy, and we know what this usually means. Right. Is, is that accurate? I mean, yeah. he, when he had a, a, an, a big edge, it was like, uh-oh, here we go, he's gonna start throwing guys around. I mean, true or not true? That was a legend. 100% true, but on the flip side, he wasn't very vocal about it. He, oh, really? You could tell by his body language, you could tell he's getting a little agitated, but he never one time came up to me and said, "Wait." Hey, come on, man, just throw me the ball. He, not one time in the 20 some odd games we played together. Really? Never once came up and, and complained about not getting the ball. I knew he hadn't caught a ball yet. I knew he hadn't caught a ball in the first quarter. But would he like stalk around? Is that what he'd do? He, I mean, what, he would get up and pace. You know, the receivers would be sitting on the bench. He would be walking along the sidelines, and you could tell. And everybody knew, you know, like, golly, we need to get by money. A touch, whether it's a hitch, a smoke screen, something, just something to get the ball in his hand. Um, 
But on the flip side, like you're saying, it also ticked him off, you know. And so, you know, this game in particular, I mean, he literally put the team on his back and, and did some things that, uh, I mean, I, I've seen the guy play a lot of football. It even blew my mind. I mean, it was, it was pretty special. So, looking back, I'm glad he didn't catch, get a catch in the first game. <laughs> it first may score. have worked out for the it best. May, it may have worked out for the best. It was a, uh, this, was a, this was a big play for him. Kind of, kind of got his night going. He had, a, he had a big, I think he was player of the game this night, and, uh, you know, rightfully so. Yeah, right here. So kind of the, the same deal, you know, as a quarterback, you see all these dudes on line of scrimmage. You got a three by three and it's three over three and it's soft. And I mean, he's looking at him. He's looking at him. He's looking at him. He's looking at him. Ball's got to come in your hand. We don't have enough guys right here to protect. So, you know, whether it's this guy's free or maybe the inside guy's free, depending on how we had it protected this game, I don't remember. But you know, the ball has got to come out of your hand. And, and uh, you know, fortunately, we had a slant dialed up here uh, with the quick game down here as well, um, which allowed me to get the ball out of my hand. And, and uh, I mean stuff like this. I mean this is just this just shows how good he is. I mean, he catches it. Guys draped all over him. Doesn't matter. Rips free. This guy, no chance, no chance. You know, so seventy what is a sixty-five, seventy-yard touchdown run, catch and run, but all on a simple slant pattern. You know, they want to they want to pressure second and ten. They're trying to get you know trying to make a play to to get back on track. And uh, we had a perfect play called and we executed and and uh, ended up being a big big time play for us. So a seesaw back and forth, back and forth. The entire night. Yeah, this was uh, the ebbs and flows of this game. I think wore me out more than the physical ebb and flow. I mean, it was a uh, it was an exhausting night, you know, and and it was just one of those games you had to be patient because their offense was on the field a long time because they were able to control the clock with their run game. But you know, again, this was hey diddle diddle tight. You know, they're bringing this guy from I don't know why they think they can blitz a guy from 15 yards deep and think they're going to be able to hit the quarterback, but to each their own. So they pressure off this side. Sometimes the best way to attack pressure is to, to beat it where it's coming from. You know, whether it be a quick, you know, so we had double slant here. So from a quarterback's perspective, blitz is coming here. I love throwing into pressure. You know, they're going to be light. He's coming on a blitz. This guy comes. Josh is my first read inside to outside on double slants. And, uh, you know, they have inside leverage on Josh. So, I mean, Dave, I'm pretty sure you can make that throw, man. Probably not, but <laughs> I appreciate the confidence. Yeah, that's just uh, it's too easy. And uh, man, yeah. look at that. Yeah, I mean, I mean this, again, he was ticked off. He didn't have a catch in the first quarter, you know. So this was this is what he's. Sometimes it pays off, but you know he he made up for it. This was, uh, you know, again they're they're aggressive style defense, good defense, good front in particular. But um, they had a hard time bringing down number eighty one. He was he was big. Oh, this is special. Oh boy. Longest play. I'm, I don't even, I'm gonna push slow, but we'll be here all night. This is the longest play in <laughs> college football history here. But you know, after I went back and rewatched this, I knew I knew they were blitzing, but this is really a poor, poor, poor decision on my part. We had a we had a pass play call with the option of quarterback draw. Once they call the quarterback draw, I, I mean, I predetermined I'm gonna run the center gun in. Oh really? But with that being said, I shouldn't have. I mean, this is an all out pressure. We're short in here. I mean, we only have our five guys to block their six or seven. However many they got. I guess we're in empty, so they got seven, uh, six guys coming here. So, or seven guys. So, yeah, we're, we're short, but my boneheaded butt thought <laughs> that'd be a good idea to, to try to get in, try to get in the end zone. And fortunately, uh, fortunately made it happen. But yeah, so I mean, if I had to do this all over again, what would you have done? Got inside leverage of Coop's, but zero, so you're going to have inside leverage across the board. If you, I'm going to do it slow motion. But right here, if I just throw an easy quick, or I'm sorry, to, to, to Colton, if I just throw an easy quick little, quick out to Colton and that's just a walk-in touchdown throw it to the right to the front pylon easy touchdown but no I'm gonna make it hard on myself <laughs> be a moron a little juke a little jive god that's just so so slow but uh all money in all, I bet my mom about how had a heart attack during this place <laughs> this was uh this was a good one I've got pictures of this and he had to make a couple moves. He had a guy jabbing yeah. at the ball. There's a little going on there. Not to mention the pressure itself, but you yeah. had to kind of step out of that a little bit, step outside and find something. They actually did a good, I mean, look, we got one, two, three, four, five, six guys coming, only five guys a block. So they left the widest free, got a little penetration in the middle. Again, take a quick, easy, if I throw it right here, this front pylon, it's a heck of a lot easier than what I just tried to do. So fortunately, fortunately I made it work, but. God, it was ugly. <laughs> it worked.
It's all good. So no pictures now, on now the we, scorecard, as they we, say. No pictures on that scorecard. It just shows 21-21 after that's done. The video's there, but the scoreboard doesn't. It just shows the score. That, that's right. Yeah, that's that's true. So now he's watching it slow motion, which is never good. Good ball security, though, I will say. And oh, heck yeah. That guy's got a... High and tight, protecting it. About lost it there, but uh, yeah, I mean... There's very few things that were going to keep me out of the end zone. I was, I was hell bent on getting in the end zone. So. <laughs> but offensive line gave me enough, and there we are. Now it's a tie ball game. and That was big. Yes, yeah, it tied it up. Yeah, so now we're, now we're back in it. Mercy.net slash Cowboys Ortho. Whoa, that's crisp. Crisp taste. Brewed with no corn syrup. Bud Light. Guys? Hey, what time's your flight? I've got an hour until I'm supposed to board. All right, we have things to do. Is there any cancellations? I thought she was your best friend. Yeah, she was. But they attached a dog head on the man's body. Where's your backpack? Mom. You know what? I think I'm going to sew your backpack to your back. What do you think? So they went down and scored. Now we're, you know, beginning of the fourth quarter. Kind of again, like you said earlier, it's just a bunch of back and forth. Now we're down to seven. You know, we're driving, we got the ball inside the 20. Now we got to do something, do something with it. So, again, this was, I won't go to the wides, you can kind of see it, but this was kind of a theme for a lot of defenses, in particular with this guy over here. He's a single receiver. I mean, look at this guy. He's, what are 17 yards deep. He's got help here. He knows he's got help. So, again, this is the area you want to attack, and these are the areas you want to attack, or the underneath areas versus coverage. And, and uh, again, Coach Munkin had a great feel for calling plays and, and uh, you know, a lot of quarterbacks don't like throwing digs from the 15, 17 yard line. But with as deep as they are, and you got a player like that that understands coverage, this is it right here. So this guy right here, he takes the back, boom. I mean, there's, look at that. I mean, that's, that's stealing. So, you know, great design of play call wise. And, uh, you know, Blackman ran a good route and the timing was pretty good and allowed his big body to bounce off and, and score a touchdown. So that was just, that was a big play to tie it back up and, and kind of get us on the right track. And again, get momentum kind of back on our sideline. I don't know why. He, he wasn't very excited, was he? <laughs> Come on, Black was tied, man. He's like, no, still got work to do. That was, that was a big-time play. He well, was, now, uh, you're behind, now you're behind again, and time's starting to become an issue. Yeah, you know, this was, you know, we got three minutes. And this was a, I mean, of the 2011 season, this is the biggest play all year. You know, it's fourth and four. We don't get it here. Oh, yeah, it's fourth and four. Game's over. We're on our own 40-yard line. You know, we got – you know, double slant call. We'd already hit it a couple times throughout the, the course of this game. Once for a touchdown, once for about a 25-yard gain. So now, what do they do? Okay, they're going to blitz us. There's, there's two theories of thought. You can either pressure or you can sit back and play zone and try to, try to hope your zone works and you can rally and tackle. But in a fourth and four situation, I'm expecting pressure, pressure when, the play come, when the play comes in. So I know the ball's got to come out of my hand pretty quick. So they get up here and, and uh, they decide to go the other way. They're going to come up and, and try to disguise it. But still, you see what you got. I mean, it's it's pressure to the backside, one on one out here. I mean, that's you know, look at this route first of all. Patient up here, you know. Yeah. What do you one. like about it? What do you what do you see? Yeah, he know he knows that he knows the down distance. It's a slant, so patience. I mean, look how it looks like he comes off the line, sets him up outside. All you gotta do is just one little. See how you see the the corner? You can't see the two, and all of a sudden, you can see gets his shoulders turned just a little bit, and then crosses his face. So sells outside one step. But what I like about it is his angle coming up the field. I mean, that's just, you know, if it's tighter coverage, you want to come a little more flat. But right there, he's got separation. Now it allows him to catch it and run. So, I mean, just kind of slow off line of scrimmage a little bit. Boom, sticks his foot in the ground. Great play. I mean, now, good luck. Get off me. I already made you look bad. Now I make you look worse. Oh. Get off me. I love it. So that's a, that's a big-time play there, Rob Blackman. You know, fourth and four. I mean, again, that gives us a chance. Now we're, 
now we're moving and and uh, you know here's the tricky part now we're on the other side of 50 we're down seven three minutes left they have three timeouts we got two you don't want to score too fast right because then you put right. their offense back on the field you know so you got to kind of methodically run your plays but you just don't want to lose the momentum so that this is where for an offense like this that plays fast it becomes a little bit of a challenge because you're you know you're, you're trying to slow down for the clock but you don't want to screw up your momentum as an offense so it's it, it's kind of a it's tough. It's tough on the play caller. It's tough on the quarterback. Um, but we did what we could and, and tried to uh, try to slow down as much as we could. I mean, look. I mean, our off or our defense. I mean, they give up under 300 yards of of uh, passing to the first pick overall. You know, yeah. When he had good tight ends, he had good receivers that year. So that's uh, that's a they that's had a, a bunch of feat. pros. They had a both sides of the ball. They did. Guys still playing. Yeah, this is big. We saw Blackman over here on the sideline, rightfully so, needed needed a break. He was tired, you know, so we put Michael Harrison in. He's in the slot right here, you know, kind of flooding the zone, running in-breaking routes. There's a ton of, we knew against this defense, there's a ton of uh, ton of space in the middle of the field. Five-man pressure, they're trying to cover Trent Murphy, which is still playing, I believe that's Trent, trying to cover Joe. I ran a lot of the backfield. We should have exploited that you know, if we had known, but this is, uh, you know, good protection. Good job by Bowie. Give me time right there on the left side. Uh, good job on Michael Harrison coming flat. Good route. Now we're inside the five yard line again. I keep uh, 245. Now, right. it's like, now we really got to slow down. But we don't. We, we haul. We haul. But we score. And uh, again, now we're tied. You know, we're tied with two timeouts left. They got three. Um, all in all, a pretty good drive and, and uh, did without our best player on the field. So, what was running through your mind when they went out, <clears throat> Jordan Williamson, to try this field goal? To win the game, basically. Yeah. To win the game, yeah. Not basically, to win the game. Yeah. Scared to death, not scared. I was nervous. I was over there with Scott Verplank on the sideline, and, and I asked him, I said, when, what do you think? He's like, he's a, he said he's going to miss it. I'm like, I hope you're right. And sure enough, you know, fortunately, uh, fortunately, it was just a little chip shot. You know, this is this is one you expect. It's in the middle of the field. He's not having to kick it back across the hash or block one out to the right. But, um, yeah, we caught a break. I mean, call a spade a spade. We caught a break here and it allowed us to, to play more football and, and – uh, so let me ask you this, and I'm not meaning to second guess, but I'm just curious what you're thinking. Stanford really slowed down and, and didn't really attempt, you know, they were pretty content with trying a 35-yarder. I have to admit, calling the game, I was a little surprised that they didn't want to get a little bit closer. I mean, NFL guy, 35 yards is just total money. College, right. eh, yeah. not so much. Did Young that, did that Yeah, did that surprise you? You probably weren't even thinking about it at the time, but – Thinking back on it, did it surprise you that that maybe they weren't just a little bit more aggressive, or do you think, yeah, that's that's just how you play it? I, it? It did me at the time. I don't know, thinking back on it, if I feel that way, but I remember at the time it did. Yeah, you know, and I don't remember the series of plays that went up, uh, you know, to that to that point. But I mean, I know they had driven the length of the field in 240, you know, so they had been methodical and, and gotten some chunks. But yeah, I mean, you're right. NFL, that's a gimme. You guys can do that with their eyes closed. But in college football, I mean, that's that's. Kind of in that uncomfort zone. In the borderline. You know, on the borderline. It's like, you know, it's, it's tough. But, yeah, I mean, you know, looking back, I mean, it's always, you know, you look back and you change. Would you change things? Would you not? You know, this was, you know, in my opinion, I think we should have slowed down a little bit on offense and, and not given them a couple minutes. Right, to right, right. And, you know, on the right. flip side, you know, I think it allows, you know, they should have probably tried to try to push the ball down. I feel like you said, make it a 25 yarder. Well, yeah, I was shot, just a little know? surprised at the time. I mean, thinking back on it, maybe it wasn't as big a deal as I thought, but I remember being really surprised because they went extremely conservative, basically to set up this kick. And I think I even said on the air, it's like, boy, 35 yards for a college kicker, that that's not necessarily automatic. And he only, he had missed, a, I think he had missed another kick in this he game. Had, well, he missed one after. And this. after, yeah, yeah, that's true. So Anyway. Yeah, so that, you're right. I mean, you're spot on. I mean, that's, that's kind of an uncomfortable number for, for most kickers. I mean, you look at the NFL guys, they're missing extra points from that yardage, you know, so it's, uh, <laughs> I went from, oh gosh, to let's go. <laughs> Is that Clint pushing you? Yeah, oh yeah. Overtime. Oh, this was an unbelievable game. Unbelievable game. I mean, one of the best. I mean, if I don't see this on ESPN Classics in a few years, I'll be I'll be ticked off. But this was uh, this was a classic. It was a good one for us. Yeah, our defense. I mean, you know, to stop that run game. I mean, these guys, you know, these guys put guys in the NFL. 
this is that K-State like we've talked about. This is an unorth- this isn't a Big 12 style of offense. You got a good big time back, big, obviously a big time quarterback. That's a big test for this for this front and this defense. And they've, you know, for the most part, stood up to the test. I mean, they've they've you know allowed Luck to stay under 300 yards, and now they're you know stopping the run, and getting tackles for a loss. And again, you now you're talking about field position. You go back. I mean, you know, you, it's third down now. Now you can't you can't get field. Now they gotta they gotta get the ball down here in the 15 yard lane or yard range to to give themselves a chance. So you've got them in third and long, and almost got a sack. Yeah, this was big. Third and long is tough. I mean, it's tough even at that level. Now you got a rally attack. This is great defense. You know, in my opinion, you know, you're playing soft. That's fine. You're not playing too soft where they can't you know, catch and run to the sticks. But Markell does a great job of coming up and making a tackle for a four. You know, what is that? Three yard gain. You know, now he's got a 25 yard field goal. So now he's got a 47, what is 42, it? 42 yard field goal. He's got to try to make and. We all know what happened here. Yeah, so. an issue with the snap, it looked like, and he'd already missed from 35. Yeah, look at this again. You see there's a little bit of an issue with the hold. Yeah, a little low and inside on the snap. You know, that's tough. Holder does a pretty decent job, but you still tell he doesn't get the ball down just like they, the operation wasn't like they want it. Um, but, man. Almost got a block, too. Look at this. Yeah, those guys are coming. That's, that's a – I mean, we deserve a break, though. After the way things went at Iowa State and yeah. the way things went, we deserved – we had fate on our side. So, again – Give us the ball back and. Uh, what are you thinking now? So what's going through your mind when you went out that time? What's 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 going on in your mind? This is tough because you know a field goal wins it. So you, now you're like, okay, we got to be smart. Take care of the ball. Don't do anything stupid. You know Quinn's got a big leg, so you don't have to get a ton of ton of yards. But if the big play is there, take advantage of it. But now I'm thinking a little bit more conservative maybe than I normally would. I'm always thinking step on the throat, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. But here I'm like, okay, we got best kicker in ball or in college football. Um, Let's just get this thing closer. And we happen to call a great play, and, and they run it wide and you know, leave, it, leave it uncovered, essentially. But, uh, yeah, this was, this was tough. So second down, they get a stop on first down. Pressure. You know, you can see it coming. They, they're not disguising a whole lot. We had run this exact same play uh, early in the game. But uh, just an eye violation. So they're up in the line of scrimmage. You're asking this guy to drop underneath this route with that motion. See his eyes are over here looking in the backfield, looking at Coop. So now you gotta you gotta cover Colton Shelf through the middle of the field. It's just not happening. So great play by Colton. Uh, great job up front. Low pressure. I mean, this is tough. Like I said, our offensive line for the most part all night just stood up to the test to get in the end zone. They reviewed this, didn't they? I they was, did. I was, they they I overturned was, it, which was a bummer. It I, was, but but what a play. Yeah, it was close. What a game for Colton. He had a great game. Yeah, just again, you know, he didn't have 150 catches or whatever Blackman did, but you know. Big time player stepping on a big time play and, and the celebration was I thought it was over, man. My I had I had already It was probably hard because I don't want to say you'd shut it down, but you'd kind of hit this emotional pinnacle and then they overturn it and you've got to go play offense some more. That I that's an interesting situation. It is. It is. And I was interested to see, I mean, at the time I remember thinking, okay, do we do we run down here? Do we try to run it in if it, if it's no good, or do we do we do like we did and center it and kick a field goal? Um I think people that have money on this game are probably a little ticked off because someone in Cleveland told me it was a three and a half point spread or three point spread or something. But oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so they, the bookies were excited, but I think the public that had bet this game weren't very <laughs> weren't very thrilled. But this was, uh, you know, a great play. Almost almost gets in the end zone. Ah, oh man, so that's close. so close. So close. But before this, we center it again. Great kicker. This is the chip shot you're talking about. You got a 22 yarder. I mean, you expect any kicker and ball to make this and. And, uh, I mean, the minute this thing went through the uprights, full-on pandemonium. And, uh, yeah, this was, this was sweet. This was sweet. This was a – I mean, this was uh, – I mean, 12 wins. I mean, this was a, this was a big-time moment. Oh, it was such a big-time game. It was. You two know, really, really, really good teams. Two good teams that, like you said earlier – could argue had a chance to play in the national championship, you know, just a couple plays away or maybe a couple votes away with the BCS the way it worked. But, you know, two teams that were deservedly top three and four in the country. And, um, you know, you have one of the best quarterbacks, you know, unfortunately retired, but, you know, Andrew Luck, an all-time type quarterback. So, well, it was a big-time win for us. It, pardon me, but it blows my mind that the Heisman Trophy winner wasn't playing in this game, whether it was you, whether it was Blackman, whether it was Andrew Luck, for my money – should have been one of those three guys. It wasn't, but oh my gosh, those were three. And, and there are other Stanford players that were all America caliber guys as well. 
there were some unbelievable players in that game, but you know, for I think a lot of people's money, one of those three guys was the Heisman Trophy choice for a lot of fans. Whether it was Luck, whether it was you, whether it was Blackman, those were yeah. those are three guys that could easily have been taking that trophy home. I think. Yeah, I mean, leading into the Iowa State game, I mean, I was leading by thousands of votes, and so I'd already gone, and my dad had bought a suit, my mom got her clothes, my brother really? got her clothes. Yeah, we. I mean, we were. And Gavin Lang, you know, sent me the thing and said, you know, let's, let's start preparing to go to New York. And, you know, the timing of the hiccup, you know, when we lose Iowa State, the timing of it killed me and Blackman. You know, you lose games, you know, and um, the, like I said, that happens in the second game of the year. We lose to a f good football team. You can kind of overcome it as oh, far yeah. as the awards go, you yep, know. And, you're right. And also far as, as far as the BCS goes because, you know, if we lose that game early in the year, we win convincingly throughout the yep. rest of the year. Then we have, now we have a better – better chance of playing the national championship. So, yeah, I mean, awards-wise, I would, I would agree. I mean, you know, I think Robert won it that year, and I think they won seven or eight games, you know. So um, the awards change a little bit. I mean, now it's a quarterback award to you, usually whoever's on the best team. And um, But I, you know, I think you're right. I mean, Andrew Luck's one of the best pro prospects that has, has ever come out for the draft, and, and I had a pretty decent year that year as well. So, um, but, you know, congrats to Robert. Robert's a heck of a criminal. He was a very prolific player as well. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we definitely had an argument there. Yeah, had a pretty good year. Yeah, pretty good, to say the least.